Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Spare Parts, and today I'll be reviewing set number 75039, The Viewing Starfighter. The set came out in the year 2014, and based on the poll I did on my channel, I think a day ago, I asked you what your favorite prequel Star Wars movie was, and majority of you responded with The Revenge of the Sith, and I think this is a Revenge of the Sith based set, so that's why I'm reviewing this set. But anyway, the set comes with 201 pieces, and like I said, it came out in 2014, so let's take a closer look. All right, so taking a closer look at the set, or a first look, you can kind of see the general size of the set. You can see it comes with two minifigures, one of them being a droid. And you can kind of see it's not like a very popular Star Wars vehicle. I'm not really sure if it's in like a scene at all, but I don't know. It feels like a set that was in Revenge of the Sith. I don't know. It's just kind of when you look at it this way, it looks like a TIE fighter. So I kind of think this is where they got the idea for a TIE fighter, or like that's kind of how like they shifted the clone army. But I'm pretty sure it's a Revenge of the Sith set, so... Yeah, let's take a closer look at the play features. All right, so starting off with play features here, we'll go through the minifigure play features first. So starting off, you can put your minifigure in the cockpit. So you just open up this area right here. And which is kind of weird for a set of this time, but inside the cockpit, they actually have like that one stud system where it's only he's only like held in by one stud or two studs basically, but it's not all four. So it's, it's easier to pull them out. So when I put them in there, if I can get them in there, yeah, it's not the best cockpit design. I feel like these ledges are a little higher, so it's harder to get them in there. There we go. Yeah, his arms kind of stick up. But anyway, when you stick them in there, it's a lot easier to get them out because it's only two studs instead of four, which he could be supported by four. But put him in there. He has his control panel. Yeah, that's a terrible cockpit design. I really don't like that. It's not very easy to get him in there. But he has his control panel, and then you can fold it down. And, oh, you have to lean him back as well. Ah, that makes more sense. Okay, so you lean him back like that, and then you fold it up. And then he kind of flies the ship, and I think that's kind of cool. It's not the best cockpit, like I said, but it works. You can also incorporate the droid into the set and make him kind of sit in the ship while it flies. And I don't really like the design, but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to rip off the droid's head and then place it right here on this turntable piece so that it kind of looks like his head is sticking out of the back of the ship. You don't really use the rest of his body, but now he can kind of swivel and stuff, and then you fold this up, I think. So yeah, it's kind of nice. I prefer it when they have the whole body in the ship because then you can kind of just pull him out and he's all together. But yeah, it's a nice incorporation of him. And then moving on from the minifigure play features, we also have these like moving wing things. I'm not really sure, like, is this accurate? But they like swivel when you turn this gear right here. And I don't know why they do that. I think the one only reason they do that is for landing. So when it kind of folds down like this, it has some more landing gear. And speaking of landing gear, there's also this landing gear piece right here that folds out like this. It's not the best landing gear, but it certainly supports it. But if you like put pressure on it, it just breaks. But if you were a display person, that would definitely work well. But yeah, nice folding wings. Don't really know why they do this except for landing gear. But yeah, it's a nice detail. I don't really know much about this ship. So feel free to comment down below if you know, like, is this an actual feature? All right, so we're gonna talk about minifigures now because I feel like the minifigure selection in this set is pretty lacking. And it's not worth waiting throughout the whole video just to see the minifigures, so we'll get it over early. And starting off, we have this red droid here. Not really sure if he has a name. He probably does. It's just I don't have the box anymore, so I don't really know. I could look it up, but there's like a million different red droids. But he's just kind of a basic red droid. He doesn't have any back printing because this was 2014, way before they do that. I think like the back printing on droids is like a 2023, 2022 thing. But yeah, he's pretty detailed on the front. He's kind of beat up because... This is a 2014 set, and I probably got it in 2014 when I was, like, five or something. But, yeah, I think he's pretty detailed. He has some nice, normal printing. I think it's the R2-D2 printing, but, yeah, there's really not much to say about him. The second minifigure in this set is this pilot guy. I'm not really sure what his name is. I think he's just V-Wing pilot. Does it, I don't even know why this is called a V-Wing, because it's not really shaped like a V. Like, maybe, maybe from, like, I don't know, top down. But, yeah, this is the V-Wing pilot guy. He looks kind of weird. I always thought... Like, what's up with the face? Like, if you take off his helmet, his face looks really weird, like, kind of creepy. I always was a little scared of it. Doesn't really look like a clone face, but, yeah, he doesn't have a double-sided head because all you see through the helmet is this, and the helmet's a nice print. I think it might be exclusive. I think they probably use this for some rebel troopers, but it's pretty detailed. His torso's not that detailed. I mean, I guess the torso's kind of detailed, but he has no leg printing, which is kind of unfortunate. But yeah, it's kind of like a basic minifigure. Like, this torso printing isn't really special. It's just, like, normal trooper printing. So, yeah, it could be detailed, but it's not that impressive. I kind of feel like 
this set could do with another figure. Like, I know it's from 2014, but there was definitely better figures for 2014 than this. Another downside of this set is the amount of stickers. I mean, I don't think there's a single print in this whole set, which is not a good thing. I mean, it can be good if your stickers might be good, but the stickers in the set are absolutely awful. And we'll take a look at that now. So these both front wing pieces are both stickers, as long with this and this piece right here. And it's only on one side, which is weird. Like this one doesn't have a sticker, but these are all stickers and these are big stickers, which is like, I'm surprised they look this good because I was really bad at applying stickers when I was younger. But anyway, also the control panels are stickers, which is kind of annoying. I kind of feel like I'd much prefer these tiny one to be a sticker. Like, I don't know. It was 2014, but I don't really remember. Were they doing more stickers back then? Probably. But anyway, back here, there's also a sticker for like the Republic logo, which is just weird because I'm sure they have this as a print. It's not like as a common piece. So yeah, another sticker. And on the side here, they literally have red dots. Like what? Can't you just make this piece red? So weird. I don't know why they did this it's on both sides. Like that's just weird. <laughs> why is it? <laughs> I don't get it. And also I did a terrible job at applying this one. Look at how bad that is. But yeah. Lots of stickers on the set, no prints at all, which is just really unfortunate and annoying. And I feel like the stickers, like, come on, Lego. Some of these should be prints. Like, the big ones should be prints in that Republic logo. So, yeah, kind of disappointed. All right, so I would talk about accuracy and, like, its looks, but I don't have anything to base it on because I don't really know what it's from. And if I did look it up, I'd always have, like, I've seen the Lego model before I've seen the real thing. So I'll always, like, think of the Lego model as like what it's supposed to look like. You know, do you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but I just don't know what to compare it to because I don't know what it's from. It it looks like a vehicle they would use, like, and I always thought it was kind of cool how it looks like a TIE fighter from the sides and just like the design and stuff. But yeah, don't know what to compare it to. I just now realized that the set also has, wait for it, spring loaded shooters. Hooray! Yeah, they're pretty basic. You just push, press down in the back here and they shoot off. I gotta say, that's like pretty nice placement because you don't see them from the top. They're kind of concealed on the bottom, which I think is nice. That's, yeah, pretty well concealment, but like still really annoying when you're flying the ship and then you just go off without you like pressing them. But I guess you could always fly them without. So extra feature, not really needed. All right, so now time to talk about price per piece. So when this set released in 2014, it came with 201 pieces and retailed for I think $25, like there's not a lot of information on these older sets, but from what I could gather, it's around $25 and that's not a great deal. Like $25 for 200 pieces, that's like 11 cents per piece or 12 cents. And I don't really like this set very much. I mean, there's some bigger pieces right here and stuff, but it also comes with a lot of stickers and the minifigures are like really lackluster. So I don't know, especially with inflation, I don't think this set was worth it. It's like one of the one sets where I'm like, I would not buy this. Yeah, anyway, moving on to final thoughts. So overall, I feel like the set is a five or six out of 10, just cause there's a bunch of problems with it that are really obvious, but I still feel like some of the features are cool, like the moving wings, even though I don't really know what they're for and like the TIE fighter design. But the big problems really lie with the stickers and the minifigures. I just feel like, like, oh, what were you doing? You just put like a huge sticker sheet on like a $25 set. And when I had that as like a, five-year-old kid, I was like, what? Nearly had a heart attack. But yeah, that's one problem. And the minifigures, I feel like they could use like a third minifigure or just like give the pilot guy leg printing. I mean, I know it's an older set, but still there was more impressive minifigures in 2014. Like just look at my General Grievous wheel bike review. That had General Grievous, which I thought was like a really detailed minifigure. And he just, they still use him today. And that, even that Obi-Wan Kenobi had some great details. So I kind of feel like Lego dropped the ball with this set. And also it's not very like a very memorable vehicle. So I don't know, I wouldn't really buy this, but still there's some cool features. So six or five out of 10. So there you have it guys. That's my review of set number 75039, the V-Wing Starfighter. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And also who, who's done this with their astromech toys before? Like turn them upside down or pretend they were cannons. Like that's something I used to do all the time. Comment down below if you've done that before. But anyway, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.